change my internet then. Hopefully it's not turning it off. Hopefully it's going to kick in. Hopefully it's working. Uh, let's just wait for it to catch up. <clears throat> see if anyone comes on. I'm going to try um, without the earphones on tonight, so uh, hopefully people can hear me if they come on. Let me know. I can see a couple of people come on now. Good evening, people. I uh, can see a few coming on now. Lee Ashby here, Motocross and Spear Memories. Continuing uh, the British Speedway Legends uh, live interviews this week, leading up to the Cardiff GP this uh, weekend. Last night we did a, a cracking interview with uh, Calvin Tatum. It was really, really, really good. Um, can you hear me, Mr. Wheeler? All right, because I'm not using me. I thought I'd try and use it without me. People were saying that the the apparently the sound was coming in and out from my end, so I'm hoping if I can do it without uh, earphones on, I will. How's it going, my man? Evening, Anthony. How's it going? Hope is all good. Just got to thank my man, Lee Owen, as well, from uh, Owen Developments. You can see it going across the bottom of the screen there, look www.owendevelopments.co.uk There's all the uh, turbochargers and stuff like that. He's based over in Oxford. Beautiful. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, all right, buddy. Be good to meet you for a pint Saturday in Cardiff if you're about. Yes, that's the plan, Matt. Me and my man here, Mr. Kevin Wheeler. Luckily for me, uh, he got me a ticket for my birthday. So I was very, very happy about that. Uh, like I said, I've Sort of said before, I've, it, I've only been there once, so uh, ever. So I think it's been going 20 odd years now. So really looking forward to it. There you go, Kev. So you can put the website on there, legend. <laughs> but yeah, all the all the trains are cancelled from Swindon. So that's uh, scuppered our plans of that. So we've got to think, think of a plan B. But uh, I will just say to a couple of people that are coming in, see you in Cardiff. Not sure who that is. Uh, I'm not sure who that is either. So basically, you guys, some of you guys that have come in on Facebook, before you come into the live video, there's a link on the actual post. If you click on that, it gives your uh, Facebook profile permission, like the privacy thing, so that I can see a name like Kevin there, look, so then I can see who I'm quoting. So there's a couple there, look, otherwise it just comes up as Facebook user. No idea who I'm speaking to. I won't be able to quote Mr. Morton, who's talking to him. Yes, thanks, Kev. Yeah, it was brilliant, wasn't it? Really enjoyed last night, got lots of pics. For tonight, uh, just literally spoken to Chris on the WhatsApp as well. And my missus has also put the link there look, in the, uh... there you go, Craig. My missus, if you go on one of them, look, she's just put the link in the comments, streamyard.com. You click on that. She's done a couple. Look. So even if you're in my group or on my page, hopefully you'll see one of her comments and you click on that and it just basically, uh, you have to do it every time as well, which is really annoying, but uh, all the, you know, all the privacy stuff that goes on these days just does it every time. And then it uh, gives your Facebook uh, permission and all that. Hello, Jimmy. How's it going? Yes, it was really cool last night. Hopefully we'll have a good time with Mr. Morton tonight as well. Another MBE as well. So that's uh, two of the guys with MBEs on the trot. Awesome. Plus we got uh, Gary Havelock tomorrow night, 8 p.m. live as well. Won't lie, I'm sweating out here in my in our spare room here. <laughs> it's way too hot in here. There's just stuff everywhere. You can't even get anywhere near the bed. <laughs> Got loads of stuff in here. We have to do a mass clear out every time Poppy comes. Uh, yes, mate. Looking forward to it. So, is, is it been two years? Is, there's been no Cardiff. Is it two years because of the COVID, or three years? I think it's two, definitely two. So I'm sure everyone's looking forward to it to a bit more than normal with it being uh, cancelled the last couple of years. So I'm sure it's going to be a big one this weekend. I believe it was maybe 2011, something like that, the, the one time I went, because I know Greg Hancock won, but I didn't totally narrow it down because I know he won two or three. So <laughs> I wasn't sure exactly what year, but I think it was around 2012, something like that. Okay, James, yeah, two years. So everyone's obviously buzzing for this weekend. Yeah, looking to get there. Hope to... Um, me and Kev hoping to be there and uh, get to meet a load of you guys that I spoke to online. Um, <clears throat> put names to faces and all that as well. Because I always remember conversations and everything, so I'm sure people will uh, 
remind me what we've spoken about and I'll know exactly what we're talking about straight away. <laughs> right, let's send my uh, message over to Mr. Morton and we'll get him in and get this cracking and you can uh, throw your questions at me. I've got plenty of questions in front of me, but like I said, if I can see you guys have got some good questions, then I will uh, quote you on screen. Uh, right, this, uh, might help if I actually send Chris the link. <laughs> Just uh, spoke to him on WhatsApp. Hi, Phil, how's it going? Great interview last night, mate. Watched it back today. Ah, oh, beautiful. Yeah, it was good, mate. We're going to do a part two as well before the season's out, so that'd be good. Uh, just sending the link now to Mr. Morton. Um, right. Email sent. So we should be all good. I wanted to get my thank yous and make sure everything's been running good. You, you told me, Kevin told me you can hear me all good on the volume side of things. I haven't got my ear things in, so I thought if it works without the ear things in, you can hear me nice and good, nice and clear, should I say, then uh, all good. Just wait for Mr. Morton to come in. I've just sent him the link, so hopefully, Duncan. Yes. Hello, Duncan. Partington's finest is on tonight. How would just come home more and join seeing you right around Reading, but why couldn't you gate? Well, we'll bring that up, shall we, Howard? <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Sharon. So you can hear me good. Any, uh, is everyone enjoying the heat? I'm more of a hide from the heat, <laughs> if possible, type of person. <laughs> I'm out. So, yeah, so I can see that it's going to be about 30 odd again, isn't it? 30 odd degrees all over the weekend at Cardiff. I'm sure the fans will be loving it drinks and sun but you'll see me under some sort of uh <laughs> i'll be like a wally with a brolly you know one of them under some sort of beer beer tent <laughs> umbrella <laughs> not sure that is but evening uh just whoever that is you just said that my missus has put uh, a couple of links in the comments, if you click on that, it should uh, come up with, uh, should be able to give permission for your uh, profile then, so I can see your name like Phil here. Any news on Swinner May? How's the home straight stand up? No, it hasn't yet, Phil. You can see uh, the banner in the background, look, Save Our Abbey Stadium, the and Robins, up at Blunsdon. Uh, there was a bit of a, a lot of fans congregated there uh, a month or so ago, uh, trying to get news, basically, Phil, from all the gaming international that own the stadium, things like that. A lot of things involved uh, everyone's trying to get news basically so hopefully we'll get some news on that soon because basically all the buildings will come to a pretty much a stop they knocked all the pits down knocked all the back straight uh building down it they've still got all the home straight bars and all that and they still run in the um dogs uh racing as well so i mentioned that car i'll just see your comment Hey Sam, how, hope you're good. How are you? You right, buddy? Uh, what was it? Okay, Duncan, I see your question there. I'll get to that. Uh, can you give a shout out to Gary Stead? Tell him I'm missing him. I'll see him soon. Yes. Shout out to Gary Stead. Tell him I'm missing him and I'll see him soon. Right, I can see my man's coming to the screen. I can see you, Chris. <laughs> We'll be able to hear you as soon as I bring you in. I'm just going to uh, play this promo video, then we'll get Chris in. Then we can get underway. Great to see you here. I'll uh, just play this uh, intro and then we'll get going. <laughs> A few memories on there right let's try and bring in chris and hopefully everything's all good chris hi can you hear us i can how are you 
I'm good, thank you. Really good. Great, great. Great to see you, mate. I really appreciate your time. That's all right. Sorry about my background. I don't know what I've got there. It looks like I've got a light fitting. So oh, that's all right. I can hear you clearly and we can see you all good. So it's all good. good. Good stuff. All right. Already got people commenting and uh, bringing up questions already. Um, here we go. Look, evening, Mighty Mort. <laughs> oh, good evening. There's going to be plenty of fans on tonight. Uh, right, let's get into some of these questions. I did just go back and uh, let's go back. Because Duncan put on there, look, highly good to see one of Partington's finest is on tonight. Oh. <laughs> we got uh, Howard Bonewell here. He's put, hiya, Mort. Enjoyed seeing you ride around Reading, but why couldn't you gate? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be boring, wouldn't it, Chris? Uh, yeah. yeah, it would have been. Um, I mean, I, I really did then enjoy some of the racing that I did. Uh, I would have loved to have gated better than did do. Um, I was... I was okay at some levels, just at uh, full international level. I was, uh, I say, inconsistent because I obviously did something right, but not all yes. the time. Yeah. Uh, we have got here. Yeah, we got uh, just have a look. We've got Carl Lids is here. Just put good evening. Can I say congratulations to Katie Gordon, who at the weekend become the first women's British Speedway champion? Oh right. Yeah. Very well, nice. I missed that. I've got to say. That's, yeah, uh, I did. I mean, women in women's sport is, uh, is is on the up at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Certainly it is, after it? after after the football. Wow. Yeah. They event. brought it home. They brought it home. Yeah. <laughs> at least they did. Certainly. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully the men can in the winter. It's going to be a bit of a Ooh. weird one with the, with the World Cup no. being like Christmas time. Chris is a bit of a weird won't one. Any, but... Won't be any pressure on them, will there? No. <laughs> It's been put on by the girls. This is an interesting one. So Duncan Pepperton's put, can you ask more, what was the trophy he won that is or was the most Im he was most impressed with? Not necessarily because of the prestige of the title that come with it. Oh, interesting. Right. There's um, lots of them. Ooh. It is, yeah, yeah. So that's really about the trophy, isn't it? Um, mm, there's quite a few of them. There's a, I usually answer it this way because, uh, okay. I mean, there's a few trophies that were, that were – clearly important to me like you know winning the blrc was was, was brilliant uh winning the world pairs with pc that was that was brilliant and these are trophies that i, that I um you know are in my uh trophy cabinet and yeah. it's great great to have you know british british champion although you don't keep that one so yeah. um but um there's one trophy that i got off um for my testimony off, off a, a lady called rosemary morris um, she's no longer with us, but she gave me a, a trophy that was her father's. That on one side it had um, Lands End to John O'Groats because he was he was he was a car driver, and uh, on the other side she had it in, inscribed for me for my testimonial year, which I thought was a um, it was the last trophy of her of her father's, and so oh, well, it was one it was it was yeah, and that that was quite touching to to receive that. So that's. That has pride of place in, in my trophy cabinet. Beautiful, very nice. Yeah. Um, I've got someone here, but they've not registered their name, so I can't see who it is, but they've put, Hi, Mark, great to catch up with you and Big Mort and everyone else last Wednesday for the uh, Speedway Pub Corps in Sheffield. A great day was had by all, so must have yeah, been uh, the crew you're out there. <laughs> yeah, I met up with, uh, with, with Reg and Dougie. Uh, wow. Well, some of the, some of the Sheffield guys, yeah, we, we, we do one in, in Sheffield and one in Manchester, so it's... Uh, it's a good get together. Keeps all the uh, speedway folk together. Yeah, Barney's yeah, just come on. Barney Kennett, look. Yeah, Barney's just Barney. come on. Look, evening, yeah. me and Chris. Love the Sheffield pub crawl and all of them He's, there. Yeah, Barney's the master photographer. He takes some brilliant, brilliant <laughs> photographs. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try and give him a run for his money on the south at the weekend. Oh, Chris. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wish me luck. <laughs> good luck. No one yeah, can compete exactly. with Barney. No, he's a legendary there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right, I've got Jimmy here on YouTube. He's put, evening, Chris. I saw your 100th cap for England against Denmark at Dudley Wood in, I think, 85, 86. Always oh, enjoyed yeah. watching Chris at Cradley. Did he like the track as he always rode well at Cradley? Oh, yeah, I, I, Jimmy, yes. Um, I did used to enjoy riding Cradley. It was a good racetrack. Um, it did. Uh, I always consider some certain tracks deliver sort of... Um, a bit of bravery and you, you'll, you'll get rewarded and Cradley was one of, one of those tracks and yeah I, I loved riding at Cradley it was always a bit 
difficult because there's some good riders there, so it wasn't easy to win round Craigley. Yeah, I got uh, John here. But does Chris remember when he guested for Craigley at Bradford in '89 in the pouring rain? Uh, John Boston top scored that night, and Chris was a great guest. All the memories. John, are thank, <laughs> thanks, thanks for the uh, well for the memory. I, I don't remember it completely. You know, just it, it's. Uh, yeah, it's something that, that it's always doing. I mean, you do like a hundred meetings a year. Some some of them just uh, they just don't yeah. stick, you know. But uh, if I did well for Cradley, that's, that's I'm pleased with one one of my favourite tracks, Bradford as well. So um, yeah, we we sort of not much fun riding in the rain, but if you got to do it, we kind of get on with it. I've uh, got Kevin Ashcroft here. He's put a huge thanks and respect for giving us the best track in the UK with the National Speedway Stadium. Have you ever had a ride at the stadium? Well, I can claim to I haven't I haven't really ridden it, but I was the, we had to do a noise test. So uh, okay. we had a before anything happened. Um, we it was probably about in the February. We had to do a noise test relative to the uh, the back the back straight stand uh, because of the houses at the back. Um, we had to ensure that the noise was no more than it than it was, and the track was in the next the next area, you know, just further, uh, probably four or five hundred yards further the other way in, in the ground stadium. So we had to prove that, that there was no more no more noise. And so the uh, we, we we borrowed a bike off somebody, um, and I started it up and I rolled it around the first turn to the back straight. So that they could, uh, we'd put it on a start, give it a, a, a throttling, and uh, see what the noise was. Um, so I can claim that I was the first one to ride a speedway bike on the track. Ooh, but I've not I ridden like the track in anger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got tell it. The 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 volume was just breaking up a little bit coming from your end. I don't know if. Um... Well, was it? Uh, I would... Yeah, I don't know. Is it is it okay? I would... Yeah, it's just making a, a weird noise there. I don't what's know why. It, what's it doing? Has it stopped? No, it's just uh, it was fine for the first five minutes, and then it's just started doing it the last couple of minutes. We've just been. What kind of? I don't know what uh, it is. Nothing. It's just on an iPad. So. Uh, yeah, um, Wi-Fi, all right. Where's, where's the where's the mic? Yeah, yeah, Wi-Fi will be fine. Let me let's move a bit. So if we... How is it? Is it still the same or? Any better? Any different? No, it's still doing the same same noise. It's just a little bit of a like an extra noise. I don't know why it's doing it. Let me take the uh, the charger out. Very good. Well, uh, the mic is on, on an iPad. Uh, it's still the same, then. Is it still making it? Yeah, noise? still doing it a little bit. Still can hear you a little bit, but it's just doing an extra, like, sort of crackle and a thing on the end of it and stuff. But I don't know why it's doing it. Might just be okay. Wi Fi a little bit or something, maybe. Okay. This is picking it up off my. Uh, let me pull the, pull the earphone. Right, how's that? Yeah, still do. What I do, Chris, is I'll, I'll, I'll remove you from the screen and you click back on the link again yeah. and see if it recorrects it, maybe. Yeah, Try that. I'll click back on it. No worries. Yeah, it does. No worries, cool. Right, let's just take Chris out. Let's kick him out. Hopefully we'll just... I don't know if it... Could you hear that? You guys could hear that? I don't know if you can hear the crackle coming from that end. I'm not sure. Yeah, I might even say about the headphones. You might be able to do it without. Oh, and uh, hi, Craig. How's it going? And Bomber will be on soon. I have spoke to Bomber because uh, we did have it planned, didn't we? And then we had to re... We was going to reschedule it. So definitely going to get Bomber on as well. Don't think he would have been doing uh, been up for much talking in the last week or so. <laughs> the controversies of the uh, British final and stuff. A lot of uh, talking points there, weren't there? <laughs> Hopefully, Chris. Hopefully, it's just not the Wi-Fi. Hopefully. Right. Let's try. Uh, let's try now, Chris. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Yes. That's that seems 
no noise there now. <laughs> okay, yeah. good, 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 good. Beautiful. Right. Thank you very much for that. Uh, right, uh, what we got here then? So where are we? Um, another question uh, for more from Howard uh, here. Um, would Speedway be better with uprights or the laydowns? <laughs> oh, oh, that's a controversial <laughs> question. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. I've always been one for um, advancements in technology. Uh, whether the laydowns were a necessary move i don't know yeah. they probably make make the bikes slightly better to handle because of the laydowns uh they seem to be getting faster and faster which i think would have happened whether whether we lay downs or they were uh, uprights so um i sound very much like i'm sitting on the fence but i i really don't know you know i think we when i i certainly enjoy gp speedway and uh, the racing we get there is fantastic. So with good riders and good bikes, we still get great racing. Yeah. So although I don't think the, the lay down technology was a necessary, let, let me put it that way. Yeah, I'm okay, yeah. But it's where we are, you know, you, we, yeah. you, you certainly can't go backwards. So. Oh, I've got, uh, got Crossy on last night as well. It's Simon Cross. Oh, it's go, Simon. Oh. Yeah, he's put, hey, more, a quick visit. I was at the evening market for food and a few drinks. The first one we went to. <laughs> <laughs> um, you good? Yeah, good. Well, well, I, went, I went up to see uh, Simon and Andrea uh, a, few, a few weeks ago. We had a great time uh, showing around France and the uh, evening markets. And we were, uh, yeah, we had a brilliant time. It was good to catch up with him. Uh, are, you, are, you in, are you going at the weekend, Chris? Are you going to the Cardiff this weekend? Uh, I'm I'm still working that out. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm I'm possibly uh, it could be that I've got to look after my granddaughter, so that might be. I suppose it's more important. No, I shouldn't say that. It's more important than speedway. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe I could take her. <laughs> yeah, one day certainly. Talking? Yeah, she, she's not ready yeah. yet for that. All oh, right. Okay. It's not a bit yeah, too three and a half. All oh, right. Yeah, a bit too young there. <laughs> be a bit yeah. loud and stuff as well, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's talking about uh, the electric things, even in motocross and things like that. Even people talking about them on speedway bike. Can you even imagine that? In a speedway bike, all the list electric? And... Um, yes. I mean, I, I can see that if the sport's going to continue, you know, if, uh, for another, um, you know, it's nearly 100 years since speedway's been going. Um, if it's going to continue, it's going to have to find other ways of doing it. Now, it may be that we end up with... Um, you know the, the hydrogen engine or something but i think diesel and diesel petrol and methanol in our case is probably going to go uh yeah i don't know how they're going to do it though it, it, it's the thing is with, with speedway we've got heavy flywheels which give us the uh give speedway bikes the ability to do what they do uh so whether they can develop that into an electric engine that's up to the uh the clever people to work that out Exactly. Yeah, there's definitely a, a couple coming into the motocross as well, and and they go. Yeah, they will do. Good. Yeah. And, yeah. So it looks like it's so all going to be on. I, I think we see the, 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 the torque generated by um, uh, you know by electric motors is, is is quite incredible. So they can be powerful enough. So let's see what the future yeah. holds. Yep, be interesting. Um, someone mm. just brought it up in the comments as well about uh, your book uh, that you did oh, yeah. um, until the can ran out. I do speak to Brian Burford quite a bit, and he lives not far from me. I uh, see so he did the book with you. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, yeah I actually uh, bought one today online, actually. <laughs> oh, did you? Still, yeah, so it's on the way. You can still so get gonna, them, can you? Yeah, you can. So that's what I was just about to bring up. You can still get uh, there's some. You can still get So I've just ordered one online, so I'm going to check that out myself as well. So we'll right, to that. What was that yeah. like for you, Chris? Was that obviously there's quite a bit? I don't think people quite realise what's involved. It's quite a lot. No, it, I mean it was a long time ago. I'd been I'd been wanting to do one. I think and then Brian had done a few books, and I met him at yeah. uh, at a um, it was a Bellevue um, I don't know like um, a fair, you know, that was uh, okay, yeah. that, that someone and Brian was there. And I had a chat with him, and I said yeah. I, I want wanted to do a book, um, but. And what, I, what I said to him was, look, I actually want to do it myself, uh, but I'd like you to, to help me with it, which is what he did. So I did probably 80% of the writing, 
yeah. Brian, with his uh, journalistic knowledge, he, he yeah. was able to, you know, do all the dates and, and, and everything and did some of the writing. Um, and that's how we did it. I used to spend, uh, you know, I'd be up till two, three o'clock in the morning writing certain sections. And uh, it was it was a, I won't say it was a long process, but it but it, it, it requires a commitment that uh, you've got to be full on with it. And uh, yeah, I think it, it, it worked quite well. It worked well for me because I, I did what I wanted to do, which was uh, do some writing and, and do it as a, um, you know, genuinely an autobiography. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed it. It was, uh, yeah, it's 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 quite a um, a tricky process. You've got to learn how to do it, and and of course, Brian's experience was was a big help for me. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, whether I'm ready for another one, I don't know. Oh, that could be an offence soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've got one on the way, so I will check it out, Chris. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that. okay, well, well, give us some feedback on it then. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I just got Gary Gary O'Hare's just come on and said, good answer, Mort. We loved our era, for sure. Oh, yeah, Gary. <laughs> Gary still rides yeah. the uprights. I see quite a lot, doesn't he? I've seen him on. Yeah, he, he, he does, yeah. He's, um, yeah, good on him. He's, he's He manages to keep riding, which I think it would be tricky for me to jump on a bike and do what he does now. Well, I won't be able to do it. Simple as that. I might have to get back so, into it, Chris. I just see. Uh, I was just speaking to a chap, Alex Chad, and uh, this Thursday at the Isle of Wight, I believe they're doing a upright British Championship. Are this they? Thursday, right. yeah, and there's quite a few names on there that I noticed. I noticed Gordon Kennett's name was on there. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a few guys. Simmons was there, and a few others. It's very fun. tempted, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I've not got a bike. No. I'll, I'll probably get an offer of one now, won't I? was going to say, you'll get a few offers now, you said that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, James Young's just come on and put, uh, what era of your career did you enjoy the most and what was your biggest highlight? Well, all right. Um, I suppose, uh, maybe all of it, but the, the I had a, um, a very good period from 80 probably through to 85. That was probably the, the the best period for me, um, and yeah, we was England. We, we won quite a few things. Uh, obviously, World Cup in in nineteen eighty, we won. Um, I yeah qualified again for the for a world final, which I hadn't done for a few years. So winning the Intercontinental Championship in nineteen eighty. Um, eighty one was probably a little bit lean, but but got through to I was in the the. The world final at Wembley, last world final, uh, which was uh, that was quite something actually being being riding at Wembley, uh, second time for me, and um, yeah, the, the British champion in eighty three, eighty four won won the pairs with with, with PC and then uh, and also the, the British League Riders Championship. Um, I'm not saying things didn't happen in the next few years, but that was. Yeah, that was quite a good period for me. Yeah, massively. We'll come back to a couple of them uh, points as well in a bit. Uh, Gary just said, my bike's here any time for a spin. <laughs> that was quick. That was quick. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Here we go. <laughs> thanks, Gary. I'll, I'll bear it in mind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, uh, it's okay. He's... What have you uh, been up to lately then, Chris? What's, uh, what's been happening? Um, working. I mean, I work uh, in, in in the building trade, so I'm, I'm busy, uh, working hard. Don't not really uh, any plans to retire yet. So uh, I enjoy what I'm doing. So yeah, can't ride speedway anymore. So <laughs> so got, got to do something else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, your brother Dave Morton, of course, is another great speedway rider as well. What was that like for you having a brother uh, racing as well? Did you have any good races together? Any sort of uh, ones that spring to mind? Uh, yeah, yeah. Whenever we met, it was always a challenge. We we uh, we probably uh, it's probably an even split who who won the most. But uh, it was <laughs> we we yeah we had quite a few uh, tussles. Nothing, nothing expected and nothing given, you know. So uh, we, we we used to race quite hard. Um, there wasn't there was an occasion which um, 
I do always tell this. He, he, had, he had an injury with his knee, which meant that he couldn't he couldn't bend his knee properly. And um, we were at Bellevue, and he was in front of me. Uh, he'd made the start, which he regularly did, and I hadn't, which I regularly didn't. And uh, he, and his bike was packing up in front of me, and and he's and he's trying to stop me getting past him. So I'm I'm trying all different ways. In the end, I just barged my way through and knocked him off. Oh, and he God. slid and he slid down, hit the fence with his with his leg, which bent his leg back and sorted his knee out and fixed his no knee way. that wouldn't that wouldn't work properly, yeah. Did it? <laughs> so yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> so he actually thanked you, he didn't get across about that one. Well, he he to, to be honest about it, he was uh he was asking for trouble trying to do what he was doing, but you know, <laughs> that's it, that's racing. Yeah, definitely for yeah. sure. I got a nice pick here. Uh, nice. Oh right. Now that's interesting because that's on uh, David's long track bike. Ah. That's a, a KSS. Uh, Keith Stevenson um, designed long tracker or grass track bike. Um, and I don't know why I'm on it, and, and I don't know why I'm I'm riding it, but that's what that is. Um, it was quite early on. It was like about. 70s, late 70s, probably that. Mm. Yeah, I've just got a question here from uh, Lewis Jackson. Hi, Lewis. He's put evening, guys. He's put, uh, how come Dave ended up at Hackney, Chris? Um, right, well, that was the link really with Crew because, um, oh, okay, Crew was a feeder track for, uh, for the, the really for maybe Kings Lane and, and Hackney, and so. Um, I think it was. Uh, so I think who, who who ran who was in charge of, of crew, I can't remember the name of them, but um, the people that were in charge of, of crew um, suggested that he that that he should go to Hackney. I think Len probably was was pushing for him as well. So so uh, that's how we ended up at, at, at Hackney was through through crew. Uh, Phil Elkin here. Hi, Phil. He's put uh, more as a big miss for British Speedway. So much experience on and off the. I think I meant you meant experience there on and off the track. Yeah. Speedway legend. Thank, thanks very much, Phil. Yes, um, I mean, I, uh, obviously, I, I had, I still felt I had a lot to offer, and so the that, that really was a result. The, the National Speedway saying the result of what was, what I still had in in. In my in the bag really, and so I I worked quite hard to get that stadium, um, and thankfully we you know British Speedway has got um, a national speedway stadium, and it's and it creates good racing, which is what I, I always wanted, um, and it's certainly the sort of track that I would have loved to have ridden on. Yeah, for sure, and like you said, you put in so much hard work to get that stadium there, and. Uh... Like you said, everyone raves about it, don't they? Former and riders, current riders, and everyone wish that they could have rode it in their day, etc. So, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all all the, the things that you want from a speedway track, you know, from from yeah. my travelling around the, the the world and riding on different tracks. That that it, it's kind of a replica of, of, of um, the Hyde Road, but but it's it's not. It's got other things in there as well that make it what it is today, you know, and it suits modern speedway. Yep, for sure. Got Paul Griffiths here. He's put how many times did Chris ride uh, Luma Road in Stoke? Um, evening from a hot Stoke. <laughs> Good evening, Paul. Um, I don't know how many times. I probably, I probably rode at Stoke not more than ten times, but certainly half a dozen. What um, did you think of that track? What did you think? Uh, I used to, f I found it a little bit, it was a bit tight for me coming out of the corners, running out of room, but that, you know, it's, it's some of these tracks, which, you know, are, are really good, good race tracks. Uh, and Luma Road was one of those. Coming from riding at Hyde Road every week for me, uh, where you got lots of room to do, to do your thing. Um, I used to have to adjust my expectation at some of the other tracks, which are, you know, the, the the, the fact that we've got speedway tracks around or uh, ground tracks on the on the outside of them means that they're, they're, they're restricted to what they can do. But 
having said that, you know, some of the some of the good racetracks like like Cradley um, and Stoke, you know, it's great racing at Stoke. Just uh, used to scare me a little bit. <laughs> Get back in a bit quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, we've got Matt Stevens here. Uh, hi, more total British Speedway legend by far. Who is your top three ever Speedway opponents? Uh, from Matt Stevens, racers fan. Good luck to all the riders on Saturday. Top three opponents. Um, Ooh. yeah, that's a it's way too many. Oh, that's a tough one, isn't it? Um, uh, well, it's going to be Ivan. Um, Ivan. And I've got to really. Yeah, I think it'd be fair to mention the, the these two. Uh, so it would be Eric Gunderson uh, would would certainly be one of them, uh, and probably Hans Nielsen. So that's I've mentioned there. Uh, I've mentioned there uh, three world champions. I'm gonna, but hey, that's that's why they're world champions, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I've actually got some. Uh, I'm sure I've put some pictures down with these guys. Uh, because I know you had uh, wasn't it the runoff for the for the uh, British League riders as well as um, was it with Hans and Eric and Eric break the tapes that right? That's yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that as well. But there's uh, one with Mister Nielsen, I believe. Is that? That is. Yeah. You had some great races with those guys, and there's there, yeah. uh, one a bit later on. That's with interesting. Eric. Yeah, with Eric. Yeah. Two great mm, riders. Good stuff. Said. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good. Um, that looks that like is that actually the. Is that the one? That's, that's the one in the 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 runoff. Yeah, it's a bit of a story as well with that as well, wasn't there, Chris? Uh, with the runoff. Yeah, well, um, I mean, Hans isn't. You know, he's not an easy rider to to, to read no. what it, what he may or may not do. But I suspected, with me being on the outside, that he would run straight to the outside, uh, which. He predictably did to stop me, which which is right. As soon as he made that move, I, I switched to the to go inside him and uh, cut inside him and and took took the dirt on the edge of the dirt and, and got past him. So um, his yeah, the, the the obvious thing became the thing that let him down really. So, so uh, that was uh, that, obviously there was big uh, prestige in winning that meeting as well, for sure. Um, yeah, there always was. And it was one that I, I yeah. unfortunately I couldn't, I, you know, it, it was always a battle between me and PC and PC w w won it most of the time. Um, and so uh, it, it was always the, the top rider from each club. And so uh, I, I didn't get in it very often because P PC always was, 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 was stopping the averages for, there was never a lot between us, but it was enough for, for him to be in the meeting. Uh, and so, yeah, I... I Definitely a nice one. Probably, yeah. Definitely a good one. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts on the GP series now, Chris? Would you have um, enjoyed that yourself? Did you enjoy the one-off world finals? Um, totally different things, but... Yeah, so it's not. I think I would have loved the, the, the GPs the way it is now. I mean, it, it, it's evolved into something that's... Um, uh, you know, it's very marketable, and uh, it, it's it, it, you know we're seeing all, all the, the best riders you know, once every couple of weeks uh, in a prestige meeting. So yeah, I do like the series the way it is now. I would have loved to have done it. Um, there's always a strong argument for the one-off world final. Of course, a lot of the qualifying rounds are very similar to to, to doing the Grand Prix rounds anyway. Um, so it's i think the way the current system is that we end up with a, with a world champion that's it's about consistency and being the best the best in the world uh at you know what, what we're on for now what 10 meetings so um it does prove consistency um although it looks like um bartos is uh, is running away with it at the moment but, yeah, uh, we'll see yeah. we'll see how that goes mm. Uh, Duncan's got a nice one here as well. He's put Chris, how good uh, was a captain? Was Alan Wilkinson a legend at the zoo? Yeah, well, Alan was a, he was a, a great captain. Such, you know, enormous experience, um, and you know, it, it, you were you certainly knew that you had the strength of, of of Alan behind you, and what he could do was lift his game when it was needed for for certain races, and. 
yeah, it, it was probably the best captain that I've ridden uh, ridden under. So I enjoyed the the time I had with him. It was great. Uh, another one here. I've got no name on this one. Hi, Chris. What happened to the Aces Garden Gates you had in Partington? <laughs> Um, I don't know. Uh, but the um, when the house was sold, I, th I don't know whether they were, they were probably still there. But they've, uh, I don't suppose. I think we had a there was, there was an ace on on one side and uh, a hackney hawk on the other. So, yeah, mm. I don't know. We should have kept them. I've told word with with, uh, with my brother about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he knows where they are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good one to bring up. Oh, we've got Mr. Graham Hurry's just come on. Look. Uh, oh, Graham. Real, Hi, Graham. Yeah, just put real good on the grass was Chris. Ace of Aces winner. I saw that as well. And Ooh, following yeah, week, yeah. Uh, the Bonfire Burn Up winner. Not many riders managed that. No, that was, uh, they were two great meetings for me. I, and I, I, I loved it. And it's the thing is, you, 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 with grass track racing, it, it, it requires um, a certain level of fitness. Uh, to be able to do them, and I, it's something I couldn't do week in, week out. Not because of fitness, but because of you know r risk of injury, and it it was always pretty hard work. But I really enjoyed that that period where I did um, I did those meetings. So doing them every week, I wouldn't do, but to to get a bike out and and have a go uh, is you know it's just brilliant. Uh, and I really enjoyed grass track racing. The, the problem is, is there's, there's so there's so many good riders in the grass track that it was it was never easy to win. So uh, I built myself up for that one. <laughs> well, that, this picture as well, I love this. Like you can literally oh, yeah, the yeah. whole bike layers off the ground. I actually love this picture. Yeah, that, that, I think that's at um, the Ace of Aces. I think I think that's just a guess. That's but uh, yeah, it'll be that'll be 1988. I think. Yeah, so that's a bit to go in it now. <laughs> that's a beautiful yeah. picture for sure that one um what was i just i just did catch a question of someone then um stephen gail brafe has put more best team ride i've seen in 50 years of watching speedway Oof, wow that's... wow <laughs> yes um very, very nice yeah we still see team riding but uh it, it, it's something i don't think we see enough of um and as a a speed ride, rider and, and understanding how racing works etc um i found it fairly easy to to team rider and i don't think it's that difficult to skill but maybe that's because it came natural to me but um certainly with uh, some of the races that, that me and peter did we we kind of knew what was going on between each other and so um you know he would do something i, I know why he was doing it so i, I could change what, what what i was doing uh and so yeah team riding is quite important it's, it's something that a good team rider i think uh, hans nielsen was, was one of these where he can nurse a rider who's perhaps not quite up to beating the guy that's just behind him but um with with, with good skills then you can get you know the five one that you're looking for um but yeah i used to really enjoy team riding and uh you know, looking after um, some of your teammates and nursing them home, which which you can do if you think about it and do it the right way. It's being brave enough to slow a race down. That's really what the, I suppose the the fear is for for a lot of speeder riders that the, um, you know, you got a guy in front, your teammates in third place. Whether he is brave enough to uh, to, to risk losing his 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 winning position uh, to get his teammate through. Yeah. And that's the skill, isn't it? You know, that's that's what the skill is. Yeah. Makes you sort of vulnerable, so you've sort of got. A... That's right. Yeah, you've got to really know what you're doing and know mm -hmm. when to. I know when to let it go as well. You know, when you you've, you've done all you can do, uh, and you, you, you sometimes you've got to then just take off. Yeah, yeah. I think like Lee Adams do quite a few good ones at Swindon. That yeah, watched, uh... yeah, it's more yeah. like Lee. I mean, just just yeah, cl class rider that that it's about knowing what you're doing and and how to slow someone down but not risk your 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 position you know very, hard, fine line, very fine line 
Obviously, is, yeah, you're, I mean, yeah. you know you had a fantastic obviously partnership with PC. You obviously won the yeah. World Pens together. Of course, we did. Absolutely yeah. amazing uh, teammates at to Bellevue together. Was there was there any other riders that you really enjoyed team riding for your club Bellevue or even for England as well? Was there other guys you connected well with as well as PC? Um, yeah, um, probably. I mean, Larry Ross was was uh, he he was Larry Ross, used to yeah, ride with, with Larry quite yeah. a bit. Um, who's who's in the team? Uh, for England, I mean, probably any any of the guys really. Uh, I always used to en enjoy riding with with Wiggy, um, because he was you know obviously, obviously a class rider, knew exactly what he was doing. Um, yeah, and, and Kelvin to some degree, you know, th th there were two guys that were still in the England team when when I was when I was still riding. So, yeah, uh, we. Many of them, you know, when uh, any riders that, that are good enough to be in the England team, you can you can have, you know, good races with them, team ride with them. Phil Collins, another one. Um, yeah, we, I think it was, I was sort of, um, yeah, we filled quite a bit. That's, yeah, hey, you're well organised, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> I had that on cue ready then when you said Did Phil. You? Oh, I've got, 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 I've got a picture of them together. <laughs> <laughs> that was at Swindon, I believe. Um, Is it? Test match with uh, obviously America. I see Lance King there. Yeah, Lance. Yeah. Like did you enjoy? Did you enjoy the that. test matches, Chris? Because obviously we miss that now. We used to have so many great test matches with obviously yourself. Yeah, I think I think know. we were risk really of taking them for granted, weren't we? Because it, mm, it was, yeah. there was always uh, certainly so half a dozen or maybe more. But yeah, I used to love them. I mean, they were great, um, and they sort of lift your game as well because. It's it's the, the, it's kind of a, a level that's in between, uh, you know, club racing and full international, and so that looks like uh, Scott Autry, is it? Kings Lynn, I think that. Yeah. 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 So yeah, certainly yeah. Yeah, the test matches were brilliant, and 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 the international team stuff as well. It set you up for those and. Uh, because they were never easy. Denmark and America were, were, were tough, tough competitors. Oh. What's uh, where's that at? Uh, yeah. Just trying to look at I've the background. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to. I've seen it. I've, I've seen this recently. I didn't be glasses on to see him properly though. Good team there. I see Doncaster, oh. uh, Phil Collins. Yeah, yeah. Neil, Neil Collins, Cox, yeah. uh, Wiggy, uh, got Neil Levitz, yeah, she said, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, quite a good team. That's, that's late on, and it's um, probably 80, 88, 87. Well, what were Colin Pratt? I see Bucock and Colin Pratt there. I think they were joint managers, weren't they? Yeah, what, yeah. What were those guys like to, to work with? Oh, really good. I mean, just great experience. Um, knew how to motivate you, which was uh, really important, and pull the team together. Stood no messing, which is what you need. Yeah, they were good good lads. Got Mr. Berry there as well, wasn't it? Yeah, John, yeah. What was it he liked to work with? He was a bit of a character as well. Uh, well, we, we, we fell out, me and John, so that's... You know, it's, he, he, he he changed lots of things, and also I think he, he did say in his book that he, he regretted... Um, not keeping me on as captain, but uh, you know, I'd, I had no issue with with, with the, the captain. Yeah, yeah. Thing, but there, yeah, there yeah. was other other stuff that went on that he that he uh, that we fell out over um, over his it was it was his aggressive manner. I think really just it just uh, we just didn't get on. But Colin Pratt, he was you always got on well with him. Yeah, Colin was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, great. Got a nice one there. Of, uh... Nice picture. What was that say? There. Can't read that. Yep. That's probably my. Nice uh... is, that, is that one of my bikes? That is it. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's um. Is. Yeah, it's a. It's an engine with a pipe ahead on that. Is that uh, with a bigger valve in it, which. Uh, took it to Australia in 1975, 76. So that's all. That's what that bike is. Very nice. Yeah. 
very nice. Um, I was just checking earlier on your, your world final finishes. Obviously, it was one off world finals. Um, and it was between, I was looking at between 76 and 88. Uh, you had yeah. seven finishes inside the top 10 and around the top 10. Obviously, yeah. seriously stacked around that time. Was there any yeah. years, Chris, that obviously you said sort of 80 to 85, he was winning a hell of a lot of uh, big meetings and stuff. Was there a sort of a year or around that time that you believed that you could win the world title any of them years? Was you confident? It was probably, um, I think I probably stalled a little bit after after 76 when I, I'd qualified from first world final and I, and I was I was on pretty good form. My, um, I don't think my me, me club form didn't drop and, and I improved regularly, but, but I didn't, I kept missing out of the British final because it was, it was always a tough round to get through because it was uh, only four or five qualifiers. Um, and then, in 1980, I made a concerted effort to make sure that I qualified and I got through uh, the British final, won the Intercontinental final and so and got through to the to the World final. And then I'd, I'd kind of worked out the formula of, of what was needed, you know, psychologically to um, to do that. And so, um, but 1980, yeah, I was on good form and I think um, I probably, that was probably my best chance for Mike, Michael Lee. Uh, he won won the world world championship at uh, Ulevi in Sweden, and yeah, I was probably I was riding well enough. Uh, I just wasn't making starts, which was the big thing that that always let me down. And um, strangely enough, I had the uh, it's probably not it's probably not an important factor, but it is to me. But uh, Ulevi in nineteen eighty, I had the fastest time of the night in in heat thirteen. So. So I was certainly quick enough, but enough. you got to make you got to make starts, and, and that's what I wasn't doing. Yeah, like you said, when you get to them, it's literally everyone's on the same level. You're all as good. As yeah, it same. is. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, right. we're, we're running last to some degree is no shame, you know. But it, but it, but it doesn't get you world championship. Uh, I mean, that's probably I scored eight points, I think. But I was, uh, yeah, disappointed, um, and and it's it's well known among some people but in in my first ride uh, i was chasing jan anderson and probably got alongside him on what i thought was the last lap and it was the uh, you know the end of the race but it was actually the start of the last lap uh, and i shut off as, as i was alongside him and probably could have could have maybe passed him but that's one of them things that the fact that i still remember it obviously still yeah. haunts me you know? yeah, yeah yeah you still think about that one <laughs> yeah <laughs> Annoying. Yeah. Oh, I've got uh, David Norris. Hi, David. David how good? Hi, such, David. How are you? He's got such an awesome style. Never let us down in tough matches. Best era. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was. It was, it was a great. It was a great era, and uh, I, I, um, yeah, it's funny because that that it's about commitment, isn't it? You know, and uh, the and it. Uh, I've always said it, it is all about winning. And if you're out there doing that, I mean, speedo racing is pretty simple, isn't it? Four guys, four laps. Um, it's not about, you know, sometimes in certain meetings, it might be about being second or getting third and getting that odd point. Certainly in, in league matches, uh, last is obviously no good. But the reality is it's all about winning. Now, whether that means scoring the last point so that your team uh, wins the meeting, but can't get away from it. Or being all about winning, that's winning races or scoring points. And so that's why I always gave it my full commitment. Even Galbraith just put, uh, I think it was 1980 that you won the Manpower Trophy at Reading. I wonder what the, the Manpower, yes, at Reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, I used to racing it every year. Um, yeah, you like that's... the track at Reading, Chris? Did you like the track at Reading? Uh, when I was winning, yeah, I loved it. When I was <laughs> winning, but, but uh, it was, like that, uh, yeah. you know, some of the guys that, that, that rode there, they were hard to beat. Um, yeah. Funny, Jan Anderson being one of them. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I did. Uh, it was it, you could race there. You know, you could you could get it, it, it rewarded a bit of uh, skill and bravery, which is what I liked about tracks. A nice little picture there with uh, talking Fair about Reading. Really. Perry Johnson yeah. on these. Perry Johnson, yeah. Yeah. Wonder, as well, <clears throat> wonder if he was great, yeah. 
great guy, very optimist. Um, yeah, I wonder if I passed him. Obviously, going around the outside over there. So. Well, you're uh, slingshotting around the outside there in the dark. Looks like it. Having a go. Yeah, looks like you're away. Yeah. He was a tough rider, Chris. Carry on. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was one of his class riders, wasn't he? Pay on some was. He was, uh, he, you know, he, he developed quite quickly, won the world final. Um, yeah, no, and, and, a, and a great bloke as well. Got another nice one here, evening, Chris. Not no name on it, they've not registered. Hope you're uh, wow. Uh, uh, but the Aces fans will always be indebted to you for your hard work getting the National Speedway Stadium built. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. So it must be someone that knows you. Yeah, so I'm perhaps someone to know. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. No, and I, I go along a few times to, to Bellevue, so I'll, I'll be, um, yeah, I'll be along there soon. It's always good to pop along and see some of my my uh, friends there at Bellevue, and uh, it's good to see Matty's back there as well, which was uh, which is great. Another one there, Paul Morris has put, I want to thank you, Chris, again, for giving us the best track in Europe, Bellevue legend. Oh, thank you very much. It's, it is, uh, it's quite touching to hear some of these these comments. Yeah, there's been loads in here, Chris, I've got, I've got, yeah. a, job. I've got a job to keep up with. <laughs> uh, Duncan Pemberton has put, remember being on Freddie Starr's shoulders. <laughs> I do, still, still got the photograph. Uh, oh, really? yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, that was the... Um, 1978, the Grand when I won the Grand Prix series at uh, at White City. Yeah, he uh, he was presenting the trophy, so uh, he was a, he was obviously a big a big name at the time. Freddie Freddie Star was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TV, great, awesome, wasn't he on our main? Show? Yeah, yeah, mm, very good. Um, also, as uh, Phil said, it was always think it was a great shame how Hyde Road was sold off was a big loss to British Speedway. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, yeah, it was. A, it was a big shame because it. What what should really have happened, and, and I think certain. Um, I don't. Know, I put it. You know, stadiums or places. You know that, that should be kept, and uh, Hydro was certainly one of those. It was obviously a problem with the stadium, with the the Taylor report that because it was a wooden stadium. Um, but I think the fact that it had grown from being a zoological gardens to having um, sports events there as well and the, the zoo and everything that was there. I think it was something that the the council should have been a little bit more on top of and, and not allowed it to go. Uh, but it, it did and it ended up being a car auction, which is a, a crying shame. Um, one of the driving forces for me to, 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 to get a new stadium. Yeah, it certainly was a proper racetrack as well, wasn't it? Which yeah, the yeah, it was. It's great. Passing all round, which is great to see. Got another one here. There's no name on it, but they put Hiley and Chris. Chris, what gearing did you pull around Hyde Road in normal conditions? Well, that's obviously a secret, isn't it? I can't tell you. <laughs> you probably got a little bit <laughs> over that, have you? <laughs> uh, normal conditions, I would have, I would have pulled. Now it de depends how you, how. Um, how we explain it because the, the gear that I pulled would start on what's what was called eight seven, which is uh, fifty seven on the back, uh, on the back sprocket with with eighteen on the on the front on the engine, uh, and standard counter shaft and, and clutch um, sprockets. So that would be that would be eight seven, uh, or um, or fifty seven on the back wheel. Uh, occasionally, and it was very occasionally, I would go to 56 on the back. Uh, but if you did that too early, it just killed the engine and it, and it, and it wouldn't work. So the, the gearing really was 57 on the back. So 87, not 88 and not 86, which is 88 would be 58 on the, on the, on the, on the back. This, uh, that'll, make, that'll make sense. <laughs> this wouldn't have been flowing around a few years back, this information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there'd be a lot of they would want to know. <laughs> uh, well, it, it was it was most riders. You could assess what was needed at most tracks, even on a strange track you would go to, um, because it's amazing the, the difference one tooth makes in in as much as you know making the engine over rev and not giving you enough speed, and putting 
one two too many on that it, it kills the engine and and it, and it won't drive so it, it kind of it, it would appear to make to make sense to put a gear on that's going to give you the most speed which uh but it doesn't always because the engine won't always pull it so you've got to get it right very fine lines as well of it all i'm gathering yeah yeah especially like obviously like you said the conditions change as well yeah certainly yeah. Well, it all comes into play uh jimmy just put here does chris know him he and eric gunderson share the track record at hyde road yes i do um one of the things that's important to me to to want to hold the track record but to hold it with with, with eric gunderson is is uh is also a bit of an honor to be honest so uh yeah very very pleased to still have that and obviously no no one can can beat it now beautiful uh i've got i'm just checking on my phone so i can see some of these ones that i've registered the names this is uh bill kinsey he's put uh did you have a favorite engine to use I presume he means um, um, yeah yeah i mean it, it changes obviously through the different periods because you have um you know the diff there's, there's the westlake period the, the jawa westlake uh and then the gms but yeah there was there was occasionally you would do you'd have an engine that was that was just doing the right things for you and when it, wherever you rode it very often you would find all oh, you'd set up certain engines for certain tracks if you had a good engine that was that was winning races for you it'd probably win races for you whether it be eastbourne or bellevue uh and so yeah but but and the, the problem with speedway engines is that they um they can go they go off you know you you, you do three or four meetings and, and, and the thing's going great and then if you don't get the timing right having it you know uh, having it tuned up again then uh you can end up where it's costing you because it's not performing like it was doing so you've got to keep on top of them and know when know when the time's right for it to uh, uh to to be sort of brought back up to up to standard um and so then you've got to use some of the other engines so you you, you, you the problem with a, a really good engine you've got to be careful you don't wear it out and obviously i gather that some of these blow up sometimes well and everyone's <laughs> well, yeah that's, that's the other problem yeah they're going great and then suddenly boom yeah. gets almost too invested as well. yeah uh, obviously you won the pairs uh, world title of pc that must have been pretty special yeah. as well especially that was that was uh it was, it was great a yeah, great event for us uh at long ago 1984 um yeah we just had it all worked out to be honest it was uh we we, we knew exactly what what how we were going to do it and, and it and it it went according to plan uh we, we both knew what the other one was doing uh and it, it worked out really well for us you always have a did you always have a thing where you and pc would decide who's going to take you know like when you're trying to ride a team riding who's going to go for the inside who's going to run wide always had that discussion. no we'd, we'd make a decision on the gates uh but, yeah. but you'd have a yeah you have a bit of a plan but if it doesn't work out then there's always uh, another one you know that that, that, yeah, yeah. That, that that you would do you know so um but there was this uh you know psychological understanding of, of what the other one was doing yeah, Obviously, you had the the World Team Cup as well, and again another really special yeah. one. Look, I've just put the picture up there. That was yeah. massive as well. Yeah, Ross Laugh, Yeah, and, uh, it was brilliant. Yeah, that was great. Um, yeah, probably one of my favourite meetings that because it just it just everything went so well for me. Yeah. Have you have you all have you uh, have you always enjoyed the mechanical side of things uh, with the bikes, Chris? Did you? always have uh get involved in that side of things did you enjoy that side of things or did you just literally leave it down yeah um kind of part part of the job really and, and yeah I, I fully understood everything about the about my bikes um and, me, and mechanics that, that that work work with me um you know um uh, jed blake was, was my mechanic for, for for 10 years of my of my riding um and he knew exactly what to do for me and uh, i prepare the bikes um and he knew how to keep them up to up to spec in during the meeting so um yeah i think we both understood all we needed to about about the bikes and certainly 
it was something that I enjoyed doing. Uh, I've got uh, that's an interesting one from Carwee's, but who was the best away rider around Hyde Road? Huh. Uh, there was a few. Um, mm. uh, Billy Sanders was really good. John Louis. Um, I've got a real a lot of riders off here now, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think <laughs> everybody everybody seemed yeah. to uh, everybody seemed seemed to enjoy it. Uh, Phil Crump, he, he was uh, always difficult to beat. Uh, Hans Nielsen, Eric Gunderson. Um, yeah, m most of the, the the top riders in uh, you know most most teams certainly enjoyed riding Bellevue and, and were a challenge. It was a challenge to beat them. Yeah. Bill's mentioned. Did you did you like the smaller track at Kirky Lane? <laughs> um, I, I didn't mind it. I mean, and I think it, it was a great race track. Um, it, it's just it was always in the shadow of Hyde Road. That, that's the only thing. But you know, it was a a track when you see s s some of the riders that that, that that rode there, like Joe Screen. I thought he was stunning round 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 there, and so. Uh, and some of the racing that he did, and we used to get some brilliant racing at uh, Kirkmanton Lane. But, um, like I say, it was always in, in the shadow of, of Hyde Road. Um, and But it, it delivered great racing. It was a good racetrack. I've uh, got a good one from David. Uh, it's just come on and put, uh, what meetings had the best atmosphere? Um, obviously, we all know the British finals in the 80s were incredible. Yes. What was the best uh, atmosphere for you? Test matches were brilliant. Um, and certainly uh, some of the uh, you know, meetings against like likes of Cradley and the, the local derbies, you know, Sheffield. Um, always, yeah, always, uh, the, the, if, if there was a, a bit of needle, then uh, it was going to be a good meeting. Yeah, you can always sense that. But, yeah, definitely um, really enjoyed the test matches. Uh Atmosphere. So the British final was always brilliant because of the yeah. of what was at stake. Mm. Yeah, and uh, obviously it was literally like that was like a like a world final most of the time anyway, wasn't it? All from yeah, the, it was. Yeah. It is eight yeah. is and even into the nineties, it was like a world final. The crowd, it was proper. Yeah, it was. The, it was the meeting that, that that all the fans wanted to go to. So yeah. it, it created a great atmosphere, and uh, we always had good racing. I think this was your, uh, was that the under 21? I think you were quite young. Yeah, you? uh, it was called the British the British Junior Championship at the time, it was called. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, yeah, Neil Middlech and it. Is that Stevie B? Yeah, Bastable, isn't it? Steve Bastable, yeah. 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 It is, isn't it? yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was my, uh, my was one. Seven, yeah, 74. My one and only meeting at uh, Canterbury. Oh, yeah. Never, I never. I mean, the, the first time I'd seen the track was when I went out on the on the first race. That's so, like when even better considering I rode there as well. Then. Yeah, I was very, uh, very fortunate to win it. I think, but uh, yeah, it was uh, there was a bit of pressure on me to win, and so uh, um, yeah, and that was uh, strange. If that was on a on a uh, on a jap as well. Certainly delivered as well. Then. Yeah, yeah. Nice one, especially at that young age as well. Um, Jimmy has just put. Uh, that was another one that was a big one. Uh, Jimmy's just put. Did Chris like rolling in the golden hammer at Cradley? That was yes, good, uh, I did. I've still got the uh, still got the trophy. I've got it. Uh, in fact, I'll I'll ask another question. I'll go and get it and show you the trophy. Okay, okay. okay. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just putting up some pictures while Chris is just going to grab that. <clears throat> some nice ones here, look for you guys on Bellevue. Beautiful pictures. Chris is going to go and get the the gold arm hammer for us. <clears throat> that was a prestigious meeting as well, for sure. <clears throat> I mean, everyone, that was that was like a, a one-off world final at the Golden Hammer as well. Yeah, it was always tough. Um, sl slightly embarrassing because it needs a polish. Well, there it is. Uh, wow, yes. The golden Beautiful. Yeah, great. It's one of those 
Yeah, there's not many of those. I've got one. I say not uh, only the only, only the very top guys. There weren't many that got to win them ones either. It was a it was a tough meeting. That was always yeah, I was very very hard. <laughs> Paul Wires just put, evening guys. You just never admit to the loo when you rolled up to the tapes, Chris. Racing legend. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah, top guy. Yeah, Paul uh, was out out with us on our uh, our, our <clears throat> pub. Bash around Sheffield. Yeah, yeah, he was out there as yeah. well, was he? Mm. <laughs> um, I was going to ask you um, just to give your personal views on these on these British riders. I was just going to sort of say the rider and then just remember your memories with them and everything. Uh, Malcolm Simmons? Simo, great. Uh, well, yes, a stalwart, I think the, the word is. He was, uh, yeah, yeah. A, touch of, a touch of class, uh, Simo was. He was... Uh, yeah, great experience and uh, enjoyed time with him, racing against him. He was, uh, yeah, he was quite a, quite a gentleman, really. Yeah. I've got a, quite a good, nice little list here, but I did want to... Uh, if you don't go mad, I might have to slag someone off, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> i got uh, Dave Jessup. <laughs> you can slag my Yeah, DJ, off. yeah. Well, uh, again, you know, these, these guys, Southerner as well, remember, we got to remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got a, 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 a for us northerners, but uh, yeah, I mean DJ, another. I mean a class rider. He, he was uh, probably frustrated. He never for him that he never won the world championship, but uh, uh, he was a uh, one of the best trappers we had. Uh, Ray Wilson. Um, I mean, uh, Ray was coming to the end of his of his time when I when I started, but uh, another. You know, he, these these are guys that were. Uh, you know, quality British riders, uh, and, and you know, Ray certainly did his uh, did his, his time for for British Speedway. He was uh, one of those that I I would I would be watching when I was uh, sort of going along to Bellevue. So I've seen him a few times as a as a spectator. Obviously, got to mention the Bellevue boys, Alan Wilkinson. Wilkie, yeah, I was a great captain. PC. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, well, we, we 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 kind of grew up together and and yeah. learnt our trade um, and enjoyed ourselves riding speedway for for quite a number of years. Yeah, just a few times together. Um, Phil Collins. Phil, yeah, he was. Uh, he, when we were kids, he was sort of my. Uh, he was my age. Well, a little bit younger than me, Phil, and uh, so I always had great times with Phil. He was. Uh, yeah, a good friend and he's in america now but uh, i spoke to him a few yeah. a couple of months ago actually on, on the phone when at uh, ellesmere port reunion so uh yeah well, great I've been, bloke, chasing, though. I've been chasing him for an interview for a bit <laughs> oh yeah yeah he I'm said sure he's doing it. so hopefully it won't be too long I'll be able to i'm to sure he'll be up for that he will do yeah. it yeah i'm sure he'll do it uh simon wig wiki yeah uh, a good mate um had some good times with wiggy uh sorry Simon yeah, Wake, like, yeah, 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 Simon Wake, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, Simon was was one of those riders that uh, he was he, he he sort of developed very quickly and became absolute class and uh, a very any anyone that knows him a very brilliant sense of humour, you know, and uh, yeah, he's an entertainer, where he was for sure. Uh, I know my mum actually loved this guy, um, Terry Betts. <clears throat> yeah, Betsy. Well, he's he's another one really in, in the, the Ray Wilson camp where he was um you know, I raced against him a few times where he was coming to the end of his end of his time really. So but uh yeah, Betsy another great character. Uh and um, yeah, most people would have great memories of him. Uh Martin Ashby. I will mention the Well Martin was um you know, he he, he was one of those that we you know, for guys like me that we could learn from. Um, classy rider, absolute gentleman, and uh, yeah, I, I, you know, you'd watch him and, and learn a lot from from Martin. Yeah, I, did, I, I will say that I did read a little snippet from your book um, when I was just yeah. looking in the thing about it. It sort of had a little bit, and then it mentioned about 
I think it was riding for England and that Martin was obviously a, a bit older and you said he was, he was one of the experienced guys. Didn't get involved in, let's say, uh, yours and PCs and a few of the younger guys' uh, antics in the changing rooms with things. And... <laughs> <laughs> no, he wouldn't do. <laughs> no. No, it wouldn't be his thing at all. No, no definitely no. not. <laughs> no. It, was, it sounds good. I can't wait to read some of that. It sounds really good. <laughs> sounds good fun. Um, Andy Graham? Yeah, Andy. Um, I mean, I didn't get involved very much with Andy. Obviously, while he was uh, riding for, for um, when we were riding for, for England, we, we we probably rolled together on occasions. But yeah, I mean, another guy, you know, great. These are great folks, good fun, um, and uh, tough competitors on the track. And uh, Andy and Andy was. He was. Uh, you know, he had his moments. Won the British final at. Uh, and what year it was? Was it 85, 86? Maybe. Definitely. But yeah. 82, I think it might have been even 80. Was it? Was it that early on? Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, who else do I have down there? John Louis. John Louis, again, another, uh, you know, a, a classy rider, one that went, I always found him very tough to beat at, at Bellevue, but. Uh, I enjoyed it when I did beat him because he was, uh, yeah, he was quality. I think he won. Did he win the BLRC at, at one point? I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm not so. sure. I think he did, but I still remember watching him win the BLRC at Bellevue. So, um, yeah, what about um, Kenny Carter? Kenny, I, I got on with Kenny. Many people didn't do, um, but I, I got on with Kenny. Okay, uh, but you know, there's that. that big cloud over Kenny with, with, with what happened to him. So that was, you know, just such a sad thing that happened. Uh, but yeah, as a rider, um, yeah, I had no great issues with him. Uh, Paul Thorpe, got a picture of there, there with Paul. Thorpe. Yeah, well, we we rode, well, both for England and, and he was in a Bellevue team with him. So, uh, and he was, during his, his, his period at the, at the top, he was, uh, he was pretty hard to beat, actually, Thorpe. Got some uh, good uh, ones here, some good action shots. You got one of you there with Alan oh, Graham. Alan, uh, Alan Graham. Oh, Alan. Thankfully, in front of him. <laughs> yeah, he's a tough yeah. customer. Nice. It was Alan tough. Yeah, he was. Uh, what was it? I think I always enjoyed racing against Alan, but you never really knew what he what he what he might do. But uh, yeah, he did. He yeah, he made you work hard for your for your points, never which is what it's all there. about. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's got a, there's going to be a memorial meeting for him at uh, Birmingham in the uh, beginning of September, I believe. Is there? So, right, okay. Yes, yeah, 7th of September, I believe it's going to be. I'm going to try and get down there as well. Yeah, right? you're... Depending, on the, depending on the date and what I'm doing, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll certainly go to that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah sounds like sounds good. Uh, just going for a few of these pictures. There's uh, look like uh, Wiggy oh. and Guns. No, nice action photo. Looks like I'm there. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, another, it looks like England, uh, America, Sir Carlos and Bobby Swartz. What about those yes, guys? Yeah. They were good riders. Yes, yeah, certainly. Both of C. Schwartz's there. birthday today, I believe. Oh, is it? Bobby Swartz's birthday, huh? Yeah. Um, How'd he get older there? I don't know how old he is. He must be, I think he's a bit older than me, so he's getting on a bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, it looks like I'm starting to stir it up there. So, Siggy's... Yeah. I think he's doing a bit of team riding, but uh, I'm trying to split them. I, know, I remember Bobby Swartz used to like the inside, didn't he? he used to like, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Pushing down the inside. <laughs> yeah. Well, a nice one here with, uh, I think that's Bruce. Oh, that's one with yes. Bruce, yeah. Yeah, that's... <clears throat> yeah, that's... It's not about 1980, that. That's the, uh, well, the last lap, by the look of it, of, of the uh, Intercontinental Championship. White, uh, White City. Uh, you won that as well. Was that was that um, a good one? You enjoyed that one? Yeah, certainly. It was. Uh, yeah, that was that was kind of a, a bit of a comeback for me because I'd, I'd I'd got through the British final and uh, I needed to win a meeting that was significant and and this was my opportunity, which uh, it worked well for me. Love uh, these drawings oh. that Steve Irwin does. Look there. Beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. That's later eighties. That I think. 
like that. It's up, that must be. I don't know where that would be. It's a boarded fence, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I know he's still doing them, Steve Aaron just literally sent me a Gary Havelock one. I've got uh, Oh did he? Yes. Got um, a Michael Lee one, Bruce Pennell one and Eric Gunderson one. They're very nice. They, they're uh, really good some of these photos. Yeah, yeah. Draw it paintings. Yeah, very good. So you can get hold of Steve Aaron, he's Irvine, he does them beautiful ones. Yeah. <clears throat> did it mean did you guys like um when you were on the front of the magazines and things like that? Was that always nice? Um, oh yeah. It was um <laughs> yeah, it was a big tick in the box that to get on the front of the Speedway Star. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. It sort of was the the big thing to happen. Yeah, looks like I've had a I've had a few goals at it. Haven't I? That's <laughs> it. Um, that's in Australia. That uh, possibly Brisbane. Good experiences out there, Chris. There was some good oh. tracks out there. There's some big open tracks you must have liked. Uh, Fantastic, yeah, yeah. I, lo mm. I love, I loved it. Um, yeah, two sort of three years of, of that really do, doing that every every summer. Then you know, I'd have started a family, so that, that kind of you can't just keep keep going. But um, yeah, so that's like Speedway full on for three years. You know, just a, a short break. Um, well, you get to Australia, then ride in Australia, and then a short break when you come back for the new season, uh, and then away again. Um, and, and during the, that that period, you know, you'd be doing 100 meetings uh, through the British season, 100 meetings with uh, grass track, long track, uh, other speedway meetings in different countries. So it was quite a busy time. Yeah. I just got a. Uh, that's a good one. Um, Jimmy said we, we obviously spoke to Calvin last night. We were talking about one-liners and things like that. that he's oh, yeah. Obviously. And he just said, Jimmy just put, you spoke yesterday with Calvin about the one-liners. I remember the great Dave Lannan used to love his uh, comments. Yeah, 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 yeah. Describing Chris as a fine wine getting better with age. <laughs> 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 yeah. Love that one. He was, he was pretty special, wasn't he, Dave Lannan? On, uh, Dave Lannan was stuff. brilliant. Yeah, he was, uh, yeah, yeah, he was touch of class yeah uh, i got richard webb say hello to the gaffer for me richard Lee. webb the gaffer yeah <laughs> <laughs> ask him about his passion for playing guitar and being a musician all oh, right yeah passion for it it's, it's a lack of skill it doesn't help um yeah richard that's uh he, he i used to ride against his his dad on the grass track oh webby and uh and he became a speeder rider but uh he was a better rock star than a, than a speeder rider. Webby was, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, yeah, he could. He he was doing the thing, the other thing that I wanted to do, being a rock star. So, and it just put hi, Chris. Hope you're well. Not sure you remember me, but I loved watching you ride. Jesus, she does uh, some of the Is checkered flats for us on our motocross meetings as well. Honey Samford. Um, All right. Wow. Yeah. Toss it, you know. Put, yeah, no, good, fantastic. I mean, it's it's, it's great to hear the, these nice. these comments. Yeah, you know that, that uh, you know you've entertained people uh, for all those years where you were doing your your thing, which is you know you were just. I was just very fortunate to have a skill enjoying myself, and uh, yeah, it, it makes it sound like it's it was a breeze. It wasn't a breeze. It's tough, but. It was, uh, yeah, it was good fun, and um, it was just very fortunate to 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 be able to do that and and entertain people. It was it really is really that's just a good thing, you know. That, that I um, I can say that I did. Sure. Uh, got Jed here has put hi Chris. Did you like the Ipswich track? I remember you doing the Golden Helmet match race with Billy Sanders back in the eighties. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, Billy Sanders beat me. Uh, unfortunately, um, I think he, I'd got it off DJ. I think and, and Billy uh, got it. I didn't. I didn't retain it. He, Billy. Billy beat me. Uh, yes, I used to enjoy riding Ipswich. It was um, again a lot of these tracks. You know, where, where the, the great race tracks. 
a challenge for me coming from Bellevue, but you know, it was it was um, I had plenty of different lines and, and there was ways to to pass and uh, yeah, I, I, and, and Billy was always a, he was a tough customer, uh, and but he was yeah he was it was one of them sad things losing Billy was was yeah, was very very sad, uh, but you know let's remember him as a great rider he was and and a really good bloke you know on some of the the, the trips I had some good times with Billy. What was uh, what made you uh, retire in the end then, Chris? I know you. Uh, was it, I'm sure you did the season. Was it at Sheffield? Did a... uh, I did a season at Sheffield. Yeah, which was like uh, like that was ninety three. I think I retired in ninety. Um, I had a, a hip problem, um, which I I developed over a, a number of years, and I got where um, it was just too painful. You know, I needed a hip replacement, but uh, I was I was only you know mid 30s it's too, too young to have a uh to, certainly at the time it was too young to yeah. be having a hip replacement but development of of, uh, of uh, the technology has, has meant that probably if it was now uh you'd have the surgery done so later on uh in the year 2000 so it was like 10 years later more or less i, I had a hip replacement which uh changed things enormously for me because it was uh, all, the, all the pain had gone and uh, and I had a, a hit that worked properly um, and I've still got the, the same one now so I've had it 40 years doesn't give me any trouble shouldn't say that because it's it'll end up yeah. in trouble but uh, yeah no I'm, I'm, and that was the problem I had a my hip was knackered uh, and it, I, I was taking painkillers to be able to sleep uh, painkillers to ride and, and it was getting where if I rode, if I rode two or three times a week, I, I was just in agony. So um, it was just, I had to retire really, as simple as that. Um, now I felt that I could do the one season with Sheffield because I could get round the bigger tracks. It was the mm -hmm. smaller tracks where you had to, you know, be a bit more uh, uh, physical with, with, with the bike. And so, uh, and, and, to be fair, I suppose riding, riding not at Sheffield, but riding at some of the other tracks confirmed that uh, retiring was the right thing to do. So I just did one season. Uh, James just put there, hi Chris, did you enjoy yeah. riding Sheffield? My parents remember you watching you in 93 at Sheffield. 93, yes, uh, I did. I, I loved it. I mean, it, there was probably only B Sheffield that I would have gone back to, because obviously a bit high road had gone by then. Um, and Sheffield was one of the tracks that I used to love riding on. Um, uh, and it gave you a, a, a sort of a bit of freedom in, in that it didn't, you didn't have to, uh, you know, throw it into the corner. You could let the, the, the bike run, and uh, that's what I needed because of the, the, the injuries I had. Um, I was going to say as well, was there any other British League teams that you nearly signed for in, you know, in your career? Because obviously you were at Bellevue uh, for most of your career. Um, was yeah. there any that... Coventry nearly, but that ne never happened. Uh, during um, mm. when I had the, the, the period when I I didn't qualify after seventy six. Uh, during the winter of seventy nine, um, I was I'd requested a transfer only because I needed to do something wasn't going right with my career. It wasn't necessarily Bellevue, and it probably wasn't. Uh, but I needed to make a change, uh, and so putting in for the transfer, I thought I would get. I needed to go to a track where I would have to gate. That's basically what I was looking for. Uh, and so, uh, Coventry were interested, but they didn't seem to be willing to do the running to to get me to go because obviously Bellevue didn't want to let me go. Uh, now I don't know how the, what the politics were during then, but. Um, it didn't happen, um, but, so it got towards near February, uh, and I agreed to stay with Bellevue, um, and that was the right thing for me in the end. It was the right thing to stay, uh, and so that's what happened. But that, that was so I stayed then until until I retired. Paul's just put you need to get in the Bellevue Social Club one Monday night before a meeting and have a drink with us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. As long as it's on you, Paul. 
things is on you, Paul. But we'll be there and have a look with you. <laughs> what, we'll do uh, that. Getting the MBE must have been a, a big thing as well, Chris. That's obviously a special thing. And like, yeah, it was. A, that was, a, that was a, yeah, quite a big deal. Uh, to, be, mm. to be fair, um, and you know, it, it, I hadn't. Uh, I'd had a pretty full career. Uh, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd had a hundred and something caps for it for England. Uh, I'd never been individual world champion, but I, I, I suppose I had a two. I had the pairs. Pairs Championship and the, uh, the team championship. So, um, yes, it was justified, but it was completely out of the blue. I'd, I'd, I'd kind of uh, I'd, I'd finished riding and uh, and the letter just turned up completely out of the blue. And, uh, yeah, it was a, an absolute honour to get it, yeah. Paul's confirmed that that drink is on him, so. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Thought that out. Oh. <laughs> Don't want you paying for any drink when you walk in there. <laughs> oh. Well, when the next go, then I'll, I'll I'll try and arrange that. I'll have a, I'll have a chat with some people and see if we can we sort it out before the end of the se- before the end of the season, which is season. a bit off yet, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's Simon saying here? <laughs> Simon just come back on more. I've been no, out eating a few wines. Get home, and you're still talking. You caught your hip. I just caught your hip problems. Uh, didn't stop us <laughs> disco dancing in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I've right got now. a new hip now. That's why. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, it didn't. We were, uh, yeah, we were, we were tripping the light. Fantastic, actually, having a having a good time. Yeah, is uh, yeah, we had, we had certainly had a a good few days in France. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, you won a lot as a, an individual rider and, and obviously with a team as well. Did you prefer individual or team, Chris, or did you like both the same? Or Both, both really, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I suppose the individual meetings give you the chance to uh, to certainly do your own thing, but that's even in team events, that, that's kind of what you're doing anyway because it's a, in the end, it's you against the other riders on the track. Uh, but yeah, kind of happy with both. Did you, um, I was going to ask as well, uh, which, was there any riders that you seem to always come together with out on track? Was there a few guys that you didn't really like racing with? A few you always seemed to with. come with? There was always. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I mean, you, you, there's always a few. <laughs> so you, you meet, you meet, the, you know, the, the top lads that always seem to give you a bit of trouble. But uh, yeah, yeah no, no one in particular I wouldn't want to name names at this, yeah. at this at this time not falling out with anyone so no, no, yeah no no. no no not really um, you, you do get to know what how certain riders ride and what to expect from them um, and know when to you know is there going to be room down the outside of the fence and the outside of a rider by the fence is he going to close the gap uh, and you tend to know when to go yeah. when not to when you uh, watch the speedway now, Chris, is there, who are the riders that uh, get you know you used to entertain us so much and get people off their seats? Who who are the riders now that when you watch yourself, whether it be TV or live, is that who are the riders that get you off your seat and entertain you like you did us for many years? Um, I mean, I, I do I do like watching. I mean, it's probably obvious this, but I mean, Bartos Smarzik, I, I just I do love uh, watching watching him race. Uh, he's, I think he's brilliant. Uh, now we could do with a challenger for him to to try and stir things up for the uh, for the Grand Prix, uh, but it's not looking. I think there's a big uh, there's a bit of a gap after him, isn't there? I don't I don't know if there's anyone that's going to come up and challenge. Maybe Leon Madsen, but uh, uh, but as far as it, you know, riders go, the 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 Grand Prix are what really tickle my fancy. So. Um, yeah, some of those guys in that are really. That, that's it's always a big test for them uh, as to how how good they are, and, and that's something that uh, I think uh, we're we're seeing in this in this Grand Prix. Although, say Bartos is going to run away with it, but uh, the the qualifying places look like, and I've gone out on the GP now, but the qualifying places appear to be uh, fairly tight. You know, there's not 
it's not a lot of uh, so there's only six qualifiers, isn't there? Yeah, I see. Quite, yeah, I see quite a lot of people have asked me. I've seen it on the comments most of the night. Who's your money on for Cardiff at the weekend? <laughs> oh right, yeah. Um, Cardiff's a, an interesting one, isn't it? Because I don't know whether it's not really. I'll, I'll say it's not really smiles at its type of track, is it? Mm. Um, but it's never kind of stopped him before. But yeah, I think it'd be great to see one of the British lads do it, wouldn't it? That'd be brilliant. Yeah. Uh, but whether whether that'll happen, I don't know. Um, you know, I think we, we we're seeing. You know, I suppose you got Robert Lambert. I'm just looking at. I'm looking at the well, not the lineup, but the. Uh, the last few meetings, and you know, just seeing how how Dan performed. Now, whether Dan can, um, I don't, I don't. I'm going to say lift his game, but he doesn't need to. He's, he's, he's Dan's riding well enough to probably, um, yeah, to probably win at, at Cardiff. Uh, but it, it's such an open meeting. You know, there's so many so many good riders there that, uh, yeah, it really could be anybody's. But that would be a yeah, I'd love to see that. Actually, I'd love to see Dan Bewley win it. I've seen. Uh, well, I didn't realise. I expect a lot of us didn't realise. It's already been two years. Obviously, it's been cancelled, and quite a few have just said. I think Smarslick even won the last one they ran. Um, yeah, yeah. Three years no, ago, I don't. It flies by, don't it? Mm. Mad, madness, but with the with the uh, COVID and everything. So I'm sure it's going to be a bit of a more of a special GP than ever this weekend. Uh, being a yeah, being a yeah, I'm sure it will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just on another point, the the, um, the Tom Brennan got got a um, a late inclusion in the uh, in the meeting on yeah. the Sunday, so uh, yeah, wish yeah, him all the, all the best. Uh, a great opportunity for him. Yeah, very good. I still did see that uh, earlier on as well, so that's, uh, that'd be mm. good to see as well. Um, I did put on here. Uh, did you enjoy uh, the indoor meetings? I remember they did a lot, like Talford and Wembley. I got a picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you enjoy all that? It was a bit of a, I know it was a bit of a pre season. There was certainly a bit of fun. There were, yeah, it was great, good fun doing them. Um, but they were, yeah, and that's what they were really. Just just really fun. It was it was tricky to do, to be honest, on yeah. the, on well, both ice and the concrete. They were, they were kind of a bit, that's on the ice, I think, that one, isn't it? But, uh, yeah. Yeah, did you do like uh, for your fitness one for like in the winter? Did you do like a lot of the riders rode motocross bikes, things like that? Did you do that for fitness? What other stuff did you do in the winter? To, uh, no, I do training, weight, weight training mainly. Um, I oh, didn't okay. do any any motocross or anything. Um, yeah, but I, I was uh, preferred to do you know free free weights mainly weight weight training to keep myself fit and get get the for, for me, the physical side, you know, the upper, get the upper body strong enough because uh, it's pretty demanding on the on your muscles, speedways. I won't keep you too much longer. I'll ask you a couple more questions. Really appreciate your oh. time again, Chris. Really enjoyed it. Uh, what other sports do you enjoy, enjoy watching? Do you uh, watch any other sports, Chris, on the TV? Uh, well, I've, I've just thoroughly enjoyed watching the, the, the Commonwealth Games. Yes. Um, I do like the athletics um, and the, uh, the 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 cycling, um, yeah, I enjoy, enjoy all lots. Anything that's competitive, to be, to be honest. I did find myself watching the uh, table tennis the other night. So, yeah, anything that, that, that requires or demands someone to, um, yeah, lift the game or show show a, a special skill, I quite I enjoy that. It's a bit of a one there that James has brought up. Uh, what's your opinion of the Premiership only being made up of six teams? Many people have their opinions on it being a uh, bigger league, I presume he means. Maybe Malgamy yeah. in the team, obviously. Yes, yeah, certainly. For me, um, a, a, you know, a league with six teams, and it's not, it's not the best presentation of British Speedway. Uh, and I'd like to see it in a bigger league. Simple as that. And I know there's there's all sorts of problems as to why one not necessarily why it can't be done, but why we're in the situation that we're in. But um, it's up it's up to the authorities, the people in charge, to uh, present to to the British people and and probably to to, to Europe the best best of British speedway. And uh, I don't think having the leagues the way it's set up does that. 
Uh, last one I'll ask you before you go. I did remember that you did the uh, team managing as well. What was that? Was, what was that like being on the other side of the fence, trying to? Uh, uh, yeah, a bit frustrating, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I certainly had, had to go with it, and uh, I was. I mean, with Berwick, we were second in the league right, when a team managed for Berwick, um, yeah. and then Bellevue. We, we were we were struggling early on with Bellevue when I was team managing from Bellevue because we we just didn't have the riders to be fair, you know. So, um, but yeah, it's probably not my. Sorry, my phone's ringing. Right, can't do too much about it on the wrong side of the fence type of thing. <laughs> no, yeah. So um, the yeah, team managing was I enjoyed doing it, but whether it's my forte, I don't know. Because I used to get frustrated with with riders not um, doing what I basically seemed obvious to me, you know, but but yeah. clearly wasn't to them. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah we- could be a bit frustrating on that side of things. Mm. Been there and done it as well. Thank you very much, Chris. Really appreciate your time, buddy. Really enjoyed it. Great questions. Thank Thanks to all the people who uh, put sent questions in. Thank you. Yeah, on tonight as well. Great job. Thanks ever so much, Chris. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank buddy. You. Thank you. Much See appreciated. You. Top man. Cheers. Thank you. What a legend, Mr. Chris Morton. Awesome interview. What a legend. Two British legends, uh, Calvin Tatum last night, MBE, and go. why not go for two on the trot? Two MBE legends, Mr. Morton, and then uh, we're going we're gonna to go with uh, Mr. Have a Lot tomorrow night as well. Should be fun. Sure, uh, I did, uh, you might be able to, I don't know if you got, a lot of you guys have seen it or not. Um, I did do uh, a, I think it was a Skype at the time when I first started a couple of years ago, did the Skypes before these live ones. Um, I did do a Skype with uh, Javi back a year or two ago, and that was great fun, proper character as well. So I'm sure we'll have fun tomorrow night. <clears throat> so hopefully uh, you guys can join me tomorrow night for that. We're going to go for three on the trot uh, before Cardiff with the British legends, as, as we said. So uh, great to see some uh, <clears throat> former riders on again as well. See uh Mr. Norris on. We'll be chasing him up to get him on one day. I know we'll have a good fun on here with Mr. Norris. That 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 would be good fun. I used to love him uh, riding. Good, great rider as well. And I used to remember him uh, going on uh, Sky as well and uh, doing some stuff as well on Sky. And he was always good fun as well with that. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, hero to many, I'm sure. David, you should be a good laugh tomorrow night. Hopefully you'll see you on as well. There'll be a lot of reminiscing on tomorrow night as well. And uh, I'm sure Javi will uh, be box office as at the top drawer, as Cal would say. <laughs> Definitely get the swear box up. Get the swear box out for charity with Javi. Yeah, we'll have a good time. It still cracks me up now, though, when we did the, I did the Per Johnson one. And uh, that was brilliant when uh, Amanda Castagna came on and said, Per, stop swearing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It's a free reign if these guys want to say a, say a few swearers. Not a problem on here. <clears throat> we're after uh, certain PM times. We're all good. <laughs> we'll go with what these heroes want to do. This doesn't bother me. Uh, thanks, Phil. Very good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll catch you all tomorrow night. It's going to be uh, agreed with Javi, 8 p.m. UK time live. So just I always say UK time live. <laughs> Uh, just not being a Wally, if you think I am, or even though I am a Wally, but uh, I do that because get quite a few on coming from all over the world on here as well, in different places. So uh, even Mr. Simon Cross from France. And, oh, Crossy as well. Someone's put on here earlier. I just was going to put that up just before uh, Chris went off. Someone wrote something. I'm just trying to find it now. Someone was like, is that the real Simon? Oh, here we go. Ian, look, put, just seeing a name come up on the side chat. Is that really Simon Cross? Yeah, that's really Simon Cross. <laughs> you guys get as excited as me when these guys come on and even say a, say a few words. Cool, you're at another evening market. A, f- a few wines, is that Mr. Cross? With Mrs. Cross? <laughs> With Andrea? As far as Andrea, I don't want to get that wrong. Um, yeah, I'll say hi. But yeah, we get, uh, it's been always super cool when you get these, uh, all these legends that come on as well and, and get involved with the chat. It's brilliant. Awesome. 
really cool. I get a little bit excited, but I am a proper fanboy, and uh, I will never change that. Uh, so hopefully bump into some of these legends at the weekend at Cardiff. So uh, as I said, Le, I love a, a, I get a little bit excited and uh, try and get a selfie with a few of these legends and hopefully bump into some of the guys I've done interviews with. Might even try and get uh, Book off Calv. He's doing a sign into the book, I believe, for at Cardiff. Might try and grab one of them. Did order uh, Chris Morton's book today. I got an absolute bargain as well on uh, eBay. It was like £2.50, I think it was, with delivery. So, happy days. Beautiful. So, I'll check out uh, Chris's uh, autobiography. I'm not on there, mate. Oh, so she's going Cardiff at the weekend. So, I never know my luck. I might even get a selfie with Mrs. Cross. <laughs> You never know. <laughs> All right, okay, so your son Jordan's going with her. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, it should be really cool this weekend. Like I said, it's going to be, uh, oh, Lewis, it's going to be cool, isn't it, with a couple of years out. I'm sure everyone's a bit more extra excited than normal with all the COVID and everything. Any chance of interviewing Peter Collins? Um, story on this. I did actually, was super nervous, by the way. This is a true story. Uh, managed to get hold of Peter Collins's home number and uh, <clears throat> I was a little bit, well, I'll say a little bit, I was proper shitting myself, let's put it that way. <laughs> and I actually went for it and rang Mr. Peter Collins and uh, got even more scared when his wife said, I'll just go and get him out of the garden. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I did speak to Peter Collins and basically some of you might have seen, I literally saw Spiro Star the other day and you might have seen that you can get pre-orders of Peter Collins. He's got a new book coming out as well. So that's exciting for a lot of people out there. And uh, the discussion we had was basically he was he would come on and do an interview, but he was doing his book. So he was going to get his book out there and then uh, we could do an interview. So, yeah, definitely be excited for a one with PC as well. So that would be super cool if I can get him on. Um, so I, the whole time I've pretty much been waiting and watching for his book to come out, thinking as soon as his book comes out, I can get him on. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, and I see it said very soon it's coming out and you can pre-order his book. So I'm presuming any time in the next month his book's going to be coming out and then uh, hopefully I can uh, get the, the nerve to ring him back up <laughs> and hopefully get the interview. It would be pretty cool, I'm sure. Jan Steckman, yeah. Um, remember him come to Swindon to manage as well. Yeah, he's definitely one I would like to get get on as well. I used to love all his um, flashy gear he always used to wear. He used to stand out, didn't he? Maybe not as much as Mr. Cross, though. When he used to have all the... Crossy was rocking the pink. He was he was way uh, cool. The pink's cool now, isn't it, for all the, all the chaps out there get the pink shirts on and all that now, but Crossy was rocking the pink way earlier. So was John Davis as well, wasn't he? Remember that as well? That was cool. Yeah, definitely, mate. So, yeah, I have been chasing Pete, so I will. Yep, yeah, uh, Callum Marston's put, what about Phil Collins? I spoke to Phil on Facebook as well, chasing up Phil, because uh, like, like uh, Mort said earlier, um, he lives in America now, so I have messaged him a couple of times, and he said he will. There's been a couple who has. I spoke to Billy Hamill quite a few times. Uh, he's come on here a few times as well in the comments. Got a little bit excited for that as well. I've, I've, I've spoke to him as well, and he said he will. One day, I've spoke to Sean Moran the other day. Uh, love to get him on one day. There's so many of the guys. Like I said, I spoke to Dave Norris. Spoke to a lot of the guys. Um, yeah. I remember when I did him in the last couple of years, and everyone's going, oh, you need to, you've got so many Lee, you're going to run out of riders. No, it's never going to run out of riders. <laughs> Trust me. There's so many guys I'd love to get on, um, and I will keep chasing the dream for sure. Hassling them. <laughs> you never know. Great remembering going to Poland in 36 years. Yeah, definitely. I remember that. Well, I, would, I remember it after. Obviously, I know about it. I say I remember it. I was not born till 77 the year after, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, so definitely chasing up all them guys. You'd be surprised how many of them. Even when he mentioned um, Bobby Swartz's, but he thought it was Bobby Swartz's birthday, I think Mort mentioned earlier. I even managed to get hold of his phone number as well. Do that, sent a couple of texts, not got any replies yet. So 
we'll keep uh, keep uh, fishing for these legends for sure. There's so many of them. All these guys we spoke to from the 70s, 80s, 90s, so many world champions, so many guys I loved. I loved all the British League stuff, obviously, and always at Swindon, so I've seen all these guys come to Swindon. Yeah, he would, actually. Alan Mogridge would be a good one, wouldn't he? And I remember him uh, having a good season or two at Swindon as well when we dropped down the league as well. I remember that. That was good. Good times as well. Thank you, Lewis. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Should be a cracker tonight for any of you guys that are robbing on tonight. Get yourselves on tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Going for a cold shower in a minute. Get this, uh, my uh, own developments, uh, polo shirt peeled off. <laughs> So muggy, isn't it? Oh, dear. Yeah, definitely remember that, Phil. And he did flipping well as well. I remember he was great. We had uh, Paul Fry, Charlie Jeter. We had a great side then as well. We were doing well, and it was called the Premier League then, the, the second league down. And, uh, yeah, that was we, – we had a good couple of seasons around that time, and Ollie Allen, I think, was in part of that side and stuff like that. Yes, I shall be there as well, Callum. At that uh, – the Big L's memorial meeting, I believe that is, on 7th of September, Wednesday at Birmingham. I mentioned it to Mort earlier. I'm going to be able to get there as well. So, like I said, I haven't been to any Speedway. Where did I go? Uh, I saw the opening night at Oxford. I mentioned that last night. Obviously, died of happiness when I uh, got to meet Hans Nielsen personally. So that was amazing when we did that three-hour live marathon interview. <laughs> And then uh, I was so chuffed when he uh, said my name. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, God, do I go up to him? I don't know if you remember my interview, Hans, but he went, hi, Lee. And I was like, whoa. Could have cried on the spot. Uh, but, yeah, so many. Night, buddy. Top man. Yeah, it should be a cracker tomorrow night. 100%. Happy. Loving it. I think last time when I did a Skype with him, yeah, so it was literally a year or two ago, he was, I think he was vaping and everything. It was, <laughs> we had a great crack though. He was brilliant. He, he loves it. Uh, we had a great time. I love his saying that every time I message him, he always goes, yeah, Lino, where it's too easy. I love it. Uh, it's great. And I remember the first time we was going to do it, a uh, couple, literally going to do it a couple of weeks ago, but bloody my youngest Poppy, who's nine, she flipping broke her arm and was, we were obviously sorting all that and I had to cancel the one with Avi. I was a bit gutted. Obviously sorting Poppy out, but uh, yeah, Avi's <laughs> great. He was like organising it around Swedish Speedway. He was watching on the telly on a Tuesday night. I think our first one we was organising. He was going, oh yeah, we'll have to do it at eight o'clock because I'm watching the Speedway on the Swedish uh, on the recording and all that. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. I will, mate. I'll do my best. Um, like I said, any of you guys want to check out my YouTube channel, uh, Motocross and Spear Memories, it's free to subscribe, so it's cool if you do. And like I said, you can check out them videos in your own time at any time, and there's like loads on there now. I think I looked earlier, there's like 150 videos on there now recorded. from Many, many legends from Motocross and Speedway, many, many world champions, all the, all the guys who are on there, so super cool it is, so check them out. Hopefully you'll have some time one day just to go back over him because it's so cool. So I can't believe all the guys I spoke to. It's crazy. She's okay now. Thank you, Callum. She's had a cast. She had a wire in her arm. She did a proper job. She's had the cast off now, but she's got to be careful. Uh, so, yeah, no playing football. She's uh, got into the football as well. She's got to wait a few weeks, but uh, she's made of Ashby stuff, so she's all right. <laughs> yep, see you to all tomorrow then. So I'll stop waffling. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, 8 p.m. UK time with Javi. Can't wait, should be cool. And then we'll, uh, then that'll be our three legends on a trot. And then ready for the Cardiff for the weekend. Just got to find a way of getting there again now. Now the trains have been. So I want to go there. Hopefully meet a few people that I've spoke to many for many times over the last couple of years. Looking to have a few cheeky drinks and one or two is more than a few for me. <laughs> but uh, do get get involved. Yeah, she's all right now, Callum, buddy. So thank you very much, everyone. Good night and God bless. And I will quote my dad, bless him. He always said this to me, especially near the end as well. Before we see that. Yeah, the old Ashby stroke levers let him in my wall. Lovely. Uh, it's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. We'll leave it on that. Beautiful. 
Is that a one-liner? No, it's a two-liner, Cal. So we'll have to go for a two-liner. It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. Let's leave it on that. Ciao. <laughs> Cheers, people. Thank you very much for coming on. Great questions as well. See you all tomorrow night.